We have been blessed to have evangelist Linda Linda Potts with us helping our children's ministry. And so let's be mindful of them as we give to the Lord, whether in the offering box or via the app or online. And let's be mindful of our evangelist, Otis Duhart. He sure has been a blessing to us in here. We are very thankful for his ministry to us. For those who are watching online, there's a link provided for you on the Facebook page. It also gives you access to being able to give graciously into the men of God that have been with us. And we just want to say thank you for joining us from wherever you are at as well. Brother Otis Duhart, I love his humility, but I love his preach. Amen. Amen. I appreciate a preacher who gets up and delivers the word of God. So Brother Otis Duhart, would you please come and preach to us? Amen. Well, it's truly been a blessing. I've been here with you, and uh, I've tried to uh, thoroughly uh, preach what the Lord has uh, laid on my heart, and uh, really just hoping for more of the same here tonight. And uh, I do ask that you would pray for me, and of course my wife Casey, and uh, my daughter Elena, and uh, my son Alexander, and of course the baby that. Uh, on the way, uh, when we uh, concluded the service on yesterday, um, I got in my truck and my wife had sent a text message saying that <laughs> she was on her way to the hospital, and um, that wasn't that wasn't a good feeling that hit me, you know. And I just got finished preaching on prayer and depending on the Lord, so it was my turn, and uh, I just started to pray, you know. And I, I didn't tell y'all this, but um, last year, my wife uh, was pregnant, and we were on our way uh, to Michigan, and I was going there to preach, and uh, we had to pull over in South Bend, Indiana, uh, and uh, to find out that my wife had had a miscarriage, mm -hmm. and uh, certainly we've been hunted by the thought of that, you know, with this pregnancy, mm -hmm. um, and just really just trying to stay uh, in tune with the Lord and just trust Him, and so my mind just kind of, you know, went there and um, uh, got a chance to talk with her and and uh, they ran some tests on her and stuff like that. And the baby is doing just fine, just fine. And uh, certainly we praise God for that, but not to exclude, you know, my wife's well-being. And uh, kind of unspokenly, uh, just pray for her health, you know. Um, the changes some of you ladies can testify we men can't even come close to understanding uh what your bodies go through period yet alone during pregnancy so uh just you know pray no doubt for my wife my family and uh, lord's willing at the conclusion of the service here tonight uh when it's all said and done um i'm planning to get on the road uh, my daughter is uh, having a play tonight and uh, i'm missing it and uh obviously had scheduled this meeting before we knew the date of the play, uh, but God is good. They got an encore presentation on tomorrow, and so by the grace of God, uh, this is not my first rodeo. I'm going to drive through the night tonight, and I took an old Baptist nap today, and so uh, I should be able to uh, get there uh, at some point before day in the morning. Uh, it's been a blessing, Amen. and uh, with that being said, uh, take your Bibles and turn with me to the gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 26, that's right, I do know that uh, the New Testament is in the Bible. Matthew chapter 26, and uh, we'll read one verse here in just a moment, and that's verse number 10. Matthew chapter 26, we'll read one verse, verse number 10 here in just a moment. During the last week of his earthly ministry, the Lord Jesus made his way back to the greater Jerusalem area. And as he stopped for a time of rest and relaxation amongst friends in the city of Bethany, a woman performed a timeless act of faith, displaying her love for and devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Matthew chapter 26, here in verse number 10, the Bible says, when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, why trouble ye the woman? For she has wrought a good work upon me. Amen. Tonight, I want to preach to you from this thought, which is found at the end of verse number 10. And that thought is this. She has wrought 
a good work upon me. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we bless you. and We praise you and we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the time that uh, you have given us together here this week. And thank you, dear God, for speaking to our hearts. Thank you, Lord God, for giving the increase. Lord, as it's been stated, you're not through with us. God, I pray that you'd have your willing way here tonight as I believe you've had throughout the course of this meeting. God, I pray that in spite of me, Lord, you'd have your willing way in the lives of this thy people. Help us to draw nigh to you. Help us to submit ourselves unto thee. Grant us that new beginning, dear God, that we so desperately need in our Christian lives. And Lord, I pray that you forgive me of my sins, dear God, and thoughts and words and deeds. Lord, cleanse me of the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Fill me afresh here and now. Speak to me, dear God, through me to us. Have your willing way. And Lord Jesus, if there's anyone here who has yet to believe the gospel, if there's anyone who has yet to repent of their sin and by faith receive you as their personal Savior, I pray that you will convict them of their sin and bring them to a saving knowledge of yourself before it's eternally too late. And when the last amen is said, may we be careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory in which thou art so worthy of. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray, amen and amen. The good work that this woman did was that she anointed the Lord Jesus with her precious ointment before he died on the cross at Calvary for the sin of the entire world. This good woman voluntarily poured out that which was precious to her for Christ's sake. She demonstrated that nothing was too good for her God, her Lord, as she willingly gave her all to Christ and for Christ. And because of this, the Lord Jesus praised her and honored her calling what she had done to him a good work. Now, if the truth be told, a lot of what is done in our society today is done for selfish reasons. Even amongst Christians, if we're honest, we find ourselves oftentimes doing what we do for me, myself, and I. But wouldn't it be amazing if you and I, as born-again believers, Learn to do what we do out of a heart of love for and devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about what could be done in our day for the cause of Jesus Christ if we made a conscious effort with the help of Almighty God to do everything for Jesus Christ. You see, the smallest act done to Christ and for Christ is a good work. And oh, what precious work it is to sing for Christ. Oh, what precious work it is to preach for Christ. Oh, what precious work it is to witness for Christ. Oh, what precious work it is to help others for Christ. Oh, what precious work it is to do everything for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And what we need today are true followers of the Lord Jesus Christ who would give everything to Christ and for Christ. Therefore, the purpose of this message is to challenge us as Christians to give our all in all to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now as we take a closer look at this particular passage of scripture, notice first of all the deed of the woman. In Matthew chapter 26, look with me at verses 6 and 7 together. The Bible says, now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, verse 7, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. So here we find that while the Lord Jesus Christ sat for supper in the house of a man by the name of Simon the leper, the Bible tells us that a woman took her alabaster box, and this alabaster was a precious stone in and of itself. It was used like we would use a perfume bottle today. And the Bible says that the woman, she took her alabaster box of expensive ointment and she poured it on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me help you with something. 
there is a little discrepancy amongst some historians about who this particular woman really was. But I'm of the mindset that what we find here in Matthew chapter 26, verses 6 through 13, and Mark chapter 14, verses 3 through 9, and John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8, are all parallel passages that records various portions of this account involving Mary of Bethany, the sister of Martha and Lazarus. You say, well, how do you know? Turn with me to the gospel according to John, chapter number 12. John chapter 12. Now, as you turn there, understand this, that somebody has said, and I agree with that somebody, that the best commentary on the Bible is the what? The Bible. The Bible. In other words, if you want to find out what the Bible is saying, find out what the Bible is saying. <laughs> See, before we run to it, I'm not against this, before we run to Matthew Henry's commentary, before we run to some commentary or, or, or from Charles Haddon Spurgeon or anybody else, if we really want to understand the Bible, listen, the Bible explains. The Bible, it commentates itself. And so in John chapter 12, verse number 1, the Bible says this. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead whom he raised from the dead, verse 2. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Verse 3. Then took who? Mary, watch this now, a pound of ointment of spikenard. Now that spikenard was, a, was, was like plant juice, and, and it gave off this, this sweet odor. It, it gave off this, this sweet fragrance. And the Bible tells us that it was very costly. We would say today, boy, that's expensive. We would say today, as I tell my children sometimes, I'm not getting that. That costs too much money. So this ointment, this spikenard, it was, it was very costly. Yet Mary anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Now you think about this. The Bible says that when a woman has long hair, it is to her glory. And so either Mary was a mop, you know, a short, if, if Mary had short hair, you had to treat her like a mop, you know, and turn her upside down. And so I, I don't think that that was the case. I wasn't there. But I'm of the mindset that Mary had long hair. Now you think about this, I'm saying hair tonight. But in East Tennessee, they say har, you know, star. They put a, they really stress that R. And so here's the, in spite of all of my so-called humor, here's the thing. Mary took her hair and she took her precious ointment, this expensive perfume, and she laid down her glory for his glory. Amen. She decreased that he might increase. Amen. She anointed. Somebody say this, she anointed her head. His head or his feet? She did both. Mary, she, she break her alabaster box and she anointed the head and the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ with her precious oil expressing her faith, love, and devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ. This was no doubt a woman who was truly given to the Lord. This was no doubt a woman who was wholeheartedly following Jesus Christ. And Charles Haddon Spurgeon the Prince of Preachers had this to say about Mary's deed. He said, the beauty of this woman's act consisted in this, that it was all for Christ. All who were in the house could perceive and enjoy the perfume of the precious ointment, but the anointing was for Jesus only. By the way, Mary didn't do it for Lazarus. Mary didn't do it for the disciples. Mary didn't even do it for herself. This anointing, this, this taking this expensive oil, this ointment was for Jesus only. Amen. And you say, what does that have to do with us? I'll tell you, everything that we do should be done for the Lord Jesus Christ. 
you and I, as born again believers, ought to spend and be spent for the cause of Jesus Christ. There ought not be no price too high for us to pay for our Savior. Now, let me ask you, did Christ die for us? And certainly you know the answer to that. I'm kind of setting you up. Did he die for us? Yeah. Well, here's the question. What are we doing for him? What are we doing for him? Yes, Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Christ is worthy of our all, but if the truth be told, a lot of times we cheat God. I remember when I was in high school, and if you haven't heard the portion of my testimony now, by now, let me just brief you a little bit. I played football at Florida State. You say, that's why he's so big. That's part of it. I played football at Florida State. But before I played football at Florida State, obviously I played football in high school. And when I was in 11th grade, my 11th grade coach looked at me one day in practice, and he said, Otis, you are afraid to be good. I didn't know what he was talking about. I was 17 years old. But I remember him saying that. And I get to Florida State. Come on, look this way. Listen this way. I, I get to Florida State, and uh, going into my senior year, you know, it's, it's something about being a senior in sports. If there was never a time, then certainly that's the time to lead. And so I was kind of taking it up on myself, and we were doing winter conditions. We called them mat drills. And I was saying, let's go, guys, all loud, about like I'm doing now. And one of our coaches looked at me, and he said, do hard, is that you? That's my last name. I said, yeah, that's me, coach. He said, do hard. When you stop giving us 80% and give us 100% around here, then you can say something. Now, here's the connection. I was in my study preparing to preach to some teenagers. And if ever there's a time to get up to preach, it's when you get ready to preach to teenagers. And I'm getting ready to preach on discipleship. You know how the Lord Jesus talk about his requirements. If you don't basically love me above everybody else, you can't be my disciple. And how he says, if you don't take up your cross, you know, die daily, deny yourself, you can't be my disciple. And I'm like, boy, it's going to be on in this thing when I get ready to preach this. And it was almost like the Spirit of God began to tap at the door of my heart. And it wasn't audible, but I know who was speaking. Amen. And the Lord said, Otis, you remember when your coach told you you were afraid to be good? Yes, sir. You remember when your coach told you when you stop giving 80% and give us 100% around here, then you can say something? Yes, sir. Well, you're doing the same thing to me. And just when I thought I was given to God, just when I thought I was out and out for Jesus Christ, God showed me that I've been cheating him. There's an old hymn that goes something like this. By and by, when I look on his face, I wish I had given him more. Can I tell you something? You on your way to meet Jesus, just like I am. And one day we're going to stand before God and none of the excuses in the world, all the excuses in the world, will not help us on that day. And if we're not careful, we'll stand before Jesus and we'll wish that we had loved him more. We'll wish that we had worshipped him more. We'll wish that we had served him more. We'll wish that we had prayed more. We'll wish that we had witnessed more. We'll wish we had given him more. I want to tell you, I'm not the judge of you. But I do know this. It's time out for us cheating God. <clears throat> it's time out for us going through the motion and our devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, this woman Mary, she was a true follower, and she gave her all to anoint the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus we see the deed of the woman, or should I say, the deed of Mary. Are y'all with me out there tonight? Yeah. Amen. I feel like Pastor James hanging in there with me, but I, I don't know where y'all at tonight, so I had to ask you where you with me. Y'all say y'all with me so we can move on. Number one, the deed. But not only do we see the deed of Mary, notice the second thing. 
Notice the displeasure of his disciples. Turn back with me to Matthew chapter 26. <clears throat> In Matthew chapter 26, excuse me. Oh, gross. Matthew chapter 26. Look with me at verses 8 and 9 together as we think about the displeasure of his disciples. In verse words, negativity spread like wildfire. That's why the news is so prevalent. Feeds on negativity. And so Judas began to criticize Mary and all of a sudden, old Simon Peter, Mary, if anybody was going to anoint the Lord Jesus, it should have been me. And Thomas, 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 Thomas. Mary, I doubt you should have done that. I mean, what I'm spoke of, that happens in church. Somebody criticized the pastor, and before long, it breaks out like an epidemic. I know it ain't in this church. I'm talking about church down the road. I'm just saying. He didn't say one. All right, all right. Judas is scared. God bless you. Simon's son, we should betray him. Notice verse 5. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Now, in my study, I came across uh, uh, what some historians believe that 300 pence was worth a year's salary. Right. Now, I, I don't know whether Mary at the time made 30000 or or, or 5000 yeah, I, I don't know. And I don't know how she went about accumulating uh, this, this amount of, uh, this value of this oil like this. But Judas obviously understood that it was costly, that it was expensive in that she could have tucked it and sold it for 300 pence and given the money to help poor people. Now watch this. God ain't against us helping poor people. No, 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 no. 
But you'll find out that that wasn't Judah's intent. Right. Judah, was, Judah was acting like some politicians where they come around expressing their burden for poor people and their real burden is to get their vote because once they get that vote, they missing in action. Right. And listen, God tells on Judas. Look at verse number six. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, he wasn't concerned about them, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. Listen, Judas was concerned about nobody but himself. And he had his eyes on, on, on Mary's pocketbook in a sense. And he wanted that money for himself. And so he criticized Mary. And everybody else joined in. And they called what Mary did for the Lord a total waste. But let me ask you, is it a waste to give our all in all to the Lord Jesus Christ? Can I tell you tonight, the real waste is when all is not given to Christ and for Christ. See, giving all our time to Christ is not a waste. Using all of our talents for Christ is not a waste. Giving our treasures for the cause of Jesus Christ, it's never, it's never a waste. But here's the thing, sometimes well-meaning people, I, I, I'm talking about family and friends, Sometimes, well-meaning people will get angry with you and criticize you and call what you do for the Lord Jesus Christ a total waste. But I want to encourage you with something like tonight. Don't let the mouths of people stop you from what God has put in your heart to do for him. Listen. I travel and I preach and things like that. And I, I know sometimes I'm up here uh, loud and I, I don't try to be, but I, I'm sure I sound harsh sometimes. Like, like, like I don't have just no compassion about nothing. And that's not true. That's kind of how God wired me a little bit. But, but, but I know. I know I've even heard it. Man, he preached too loud. Man, he preached too long. Listen, you didn't call me, God did. Amen. And I'm going to do it the way God Amen. has given me to do it. And if God is okay with it, now I know from a humanistic standpoint now, humanistically speaking, we want people to like us, don't we? Right. Don't we? But too many times we're too concerned about folk liking us when we need to be concerned about God being pleased with us. Right. Right. Everybody ain't going to like what you do. So what? Because they don't like the special. If God put it on your heart to say the special, then hey, what the brethren or anybody else got to say, say the special and do it for Jesus. Amen. That's what it's about. Nobody cares if they don't like it. We have to learn that. We have to learn that. Number one, the deed. Number two, the displeasure. And there's a third and final thing I want you to notice. Notice the defense by the Lord Jesus. Turn back with me to Matthew chapter 26. Are y'all getting something out of this tonight? Yes. Matthew chapter 26. Look with me at verses 10 and 11 together. The Bible says in verse 10 of Matthew 26, When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she has wrought a good work upon me. Verse 11. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. And so the Lord Jesus understood that his time was short. He knew he was getting ready to lay down his life. He, he knew he was getting ready to be offered up on the cross at Calvary. And so he told his disciples, look, if you're going to do something for me, you better do it now. And guess what? The return of our Lord is imminent. That means it can happen at any time. I, I, I'm talking about driving home tonight. And if the Lord calls for his church, guess what? That truck might make it to Nashville, Tennessee, but I'm going to be in glory with Jesus. And so here's the thing. Because our Lord's return can happen at any time, listen now, if we're going to do something for the Lord Jesus, we better wake up and do it now. We better do it now. We're on the clock. We're on the clock. We see the Lord Jesus. He came to he rebuked his disciples and called what Mary did a good work upon him. 
You study this out, you'll find in Mark chapter 14 and verse 6, and in John chapter 12, verse 7, you'll find that the Lord Jesus said, let her alone. Yeah. In, in other words, leave Mary alone. By the way, the greatest defense attorney in the world is Jesus Christ. Yes. I told y'all my wife is an attorney. And when I'm in the right about something, I, 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 I believe that my wife will fight 10,000 grizzly bears to defend me. But guess what? In all of her efforts, she cannot defend me the way Jesus can. Christ is my defense. The Lord is my vindicator. As the psalm would say, God is my buckler and my shield. God is my defense. And we see here that he came to Mary's defense, even against his own disciples. And here's the thing. When the Lord Jesus Christ calls what we do for him a good work, then listen now, I'm not trying to show no discord, but hang with the brethren or anybody else got to say. If God said what you're doing is a good work, then you write it down. It's a good work. That ought to be enough for you. When God approves of it, that ought to be enough. We see here the defense. And as we think about defense, let me give you two things and I'm done. Number one, notice the reason for Mary's deed. The Lord Jesus gives us the reason in verse number 12. The Bible says in Matthew 26, verse 12, For in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. The Lord Jesus said the reason Mary anointed his body was for his burial. She was literally preparing his body for death. Right. Now let me ask you, let me ask you, how did Mary know or, or, or let me say it this way. Mary knew that the Lord Jesus was about to be crucified. Mm -hmm. And by faith, she anointed the body of the Lord Jesus Christ before he died on the cross at Calvary for our sins. By the way, if you're somebody here tonight and you like that young man that uh, uh, Pastor Jane testified about not having heard the gospel, can I tell you something? God loves you. Right. He loves you so much that he gave his son, the Lord Jesus, to bleed and die on the cross at Calvary for our sins. He died, he was buried, he rose again the third day having victory over hell, death, and the grave that the sin of man might be saved. His blood was shed as an atonement, as a payment for your sin and my sin. Amen. We deserve hell. Mm -hmm. right. God, in his great love for us, he took our place. Amen. He hung, bled, and died for us mm -hmm. and as us. And I thank God today that at the age of 22 years old, God, by his spirit, made me to put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ and him alone for my soul's salvation. And if you've yet to trust Christ as your personal Savior, I, I, I can't think of a, a greater event happening in your life than for you to be born again in the family of God. And there's nothing that would crown this me like a lost sinner coming to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And so Mary knew. She knew the Lord was about to be crucified. Now let me ask you the question. How could Mary have known this? I'll tell you. Turn with me to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, look with me at verse number 39, and notice the whereabouts of Mary. This was obviously before uh, this anointing uh, that took place in Bethany there in the house of Simon the leper. The Lord Jesus was in the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And notice what happened in Luke chapter uh, 10 and verse number 39. Are you there? Yes. Amen. Look at verse 39. The Bible says... And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat, watch this now, at Jesus' feet and heard his what? Word. Word. Now, I've been listening. I've heard our, our, our pastor Justin say on several nights, we need a Bible revival. And here was Mary. Mary was sitting there having a Bible revival at the feet of Jesus. Mary had the inside scoop. Right. She is God's people. We ought to have the inside scoop. You know why? Because we got his word. Right. Yeah. We ought not be walking around like blind dogs at the meat house acting like we don't know what's going on. Right. And here was Mary again having the inside scoop. Now you think about it. Peter, Peter struggled with the thought of the Lord Jesus being crucified. So much so that he rebuked the Lord in a sense over my dead body. But Mary sat and she listened and she heard his word. And she knew she knew, she knew that he was getting ready to be offered up. And when that opportunity came there in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, Mary took her precious ointment 
and she anointed the Lord Jesus Christ for his burial. And the Lord said, this is why she did it. But not only do we see the reason for Mary's deed, turn back with Matthew chapter 26, and notice the remembrance of Mary's deed in verse number 13. The Bible says, Matthew 26, and verse 13, verily, or that word verily means truly, as a matter of fact, I say unto you, I'm in verse 13, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. So here we find that Jesus said that everywhere the gospel shall be preached in the entire world, what Mary did unto him shall be told in remembrance of her. In other words, Mary's deed, Mary's anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ is forever linked to the gospel message. I ask you a question. How would you like to be remembered for what you've done for the Lord Jesus Christ? It was the great missionary C.T. Studd that wrote this poem. He wrote a poem that went like this. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Listen, we can do a lot of things in this world, but what really matters is what we do for the Lord Jesus Christ. What really matters is what we do about eternity. By the way, almost 7,000 miles away, you say, how do you know? Well, you know, I did a little research. And I did USA to Jerusalem. And Bethany was in the greater Jerusalem area. You'll find out that it's almost 7,000 miles from the USA to Bethany or Jerusalem. And that area where this happened. And here it is. Think about this. Over 2,000 years later, yet we're still talking about what Mary did when she anointed the Lord Jesus Christ for his burial. See, the world may not report what you do for Christ. They may not run some news broadcast to tell what has happened. But when you do something for Jesus Christ, it will last for all eternity. And you can rest assured that when we do what we do for him, the Lord will come to our defense. Against all our position. Let me give you this and I'm done. Mary gave her all. Where you been at all night? <laughs> Mary gave her all to anoint the Lord Jesus Christ for his burial. Dear Christians, let us follow Mary's example and give our all in all to Christ and for Christ. Will you bow your heads with me for a word of prayer? Head bow, nice clothes. Head bow, nice clothes. Lord Jesus, I bless you and praise you. And God, I pray and ask you to forgive me for cheating you, Lord. Forgive me for giving you less than my all too many days in my Christian life. And uh, Lord, I pray and ask you to help me to humble myself. And Lord, take advantage of the opportunity that I have, Lord, to serve you. To give you my all, dear God, on a daily basis. And uh, Lord, I'm not the judge. I, I, I don't know nobody's heart here tonight and I don't mean to sound like I do but you do and uh, Lord you know where where we've been cheating you you know when we've given less than our all whether it's in our praise or worship or our witness our devotion to you God you know and Lord I pray and ask you to help us help us Lord God to not cheat you help us to not give you Lord less than our all and I pray to God that as we conclude from a schedule standpoint this revival meeting, dear God, that you would help us, Lord, to make the commitment, Lord Jesus, with your help to give you our all in all on a daily basis after the example of Mary. Lord, we bless you and praise you. And uh, God, I pray again, if there's anyone here who doesn't know your son, the Lord Jesus, as your personal Savior, Lord, that this would be the glad day of their salvation before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we bless you and we praise you. In your name, Lord Jesus.